Hello and welcome to Datapine. Did you ever wonder what are the key features of interactive dashboards? In today's video, we will demonstrate to you the power of modern dashboards by showing you 10 state-of-the-art interactive dashboard features in real-world business scenarios. But what actually are the benefits of interactive dashboards? Well, there's actually quite a few. Firstly, using interactive features, you gain a lot more agility, especially when you want to answer critical business questions quickly or when presenting your data to others. Also, using interactive features, you can avoid redundant reports. This means you can fit a lot more information into one place. So, for example, instead of using 10 static PowerPoint slides, you can use just one dashboard and quickly adapt it to how you'd like to display your data. Thirdly, we can use a lot less IT involvement. By using intuitive features, it means that users will be able to do ad hoc data analysis on their own without needing to contact IT. This means a lot less resources are used and less requests for database queries or customizations. Now, let me show you what we think are the top 10 interactive features in a professional dashboard. So firstly, we have drill downs. This is a very simple way of showing some additional information without overcrowding the dashboard. So here, if you just click here, we can see some information that's related to the chart, but doesn't have to be necessarily presented in the main screen. And in this case, we're showing the top 10 most sold units in a bar graph as one of our drill downs. And another drill down here, which shows the profit per product category in a pie chart as a second drill down. Another feature is clicked filter, which is a great function for quickly showing a more detailed view. So here we just click Australia and we select a month, and then the whole dashboard is filtered on what went on in February in Australia. The chart zoom is another great function if you want to get more information about what happened in a particular month. If you see here, we have the months from January to December 2018. But if we want to know exactly what happened in February and why this February month was so low, we can simply zoom into it. And then we get a daily projection of how the month was. Now we can see that we had these three days where the revenue and sales was quite low, and then analyze them accordingly. And then I can just click clear all, and all of these quick filters will be cleared. And as you can see, my dashboard just goes back to its original state. The time interval widget feature is a particularly useful interactive feature if you have data that you're looking at over a specific time period. So if you're using a lot of timelines in your dashboard, then adding the time into a widget feature is a good idea. And if I just click here, I can see either a daily, weekly, monthly, or yearly view of the sales and revenue data. This is automatically set to a monthly view, so I'm just gonna reset it to that. And this is a great way to identify any trends that you may have in your data. For example, you can see the weekly trends and the highs and the low points, and then compare these trends to perhaps the monthly trends. We can also show or hide chart values as we please. For example, in this pie chart, we can deselect specific criteria, and then the pie chart will adapt accordingly. Um, this is really good if we have data that's got a lot of categories, for example, 15 categories, and 10 of the categories have under 1%. We can then just exclude these 10 and the pie chart will look a lot cleaner. And of course, we can include them back. You can also customize what you see when you hover over specific charts. These are called custom chart tooltips. And they work best for stack charts, but here I'll just show you on a normal bar chart. You can show information such as one value, all values, or even a custom text with values. And you can also add custom sums or averages which can be really useful if you want to just show, quite quickly, a small snippet of information. So we can see here, when we hover over this chart, we get a small piece of information. But this is not customised. On this chart, however, of revenue and sales, we've customised it. And we can see that when we hover over September, for example, we have the amount of 1.9 million and also the percentage, which was customised. And then we compare that to when we hover over, for example, February, when it's just 6%. And if we pick a better month, for example, November, 
it was 11%, and the amount was 2.7 million. Adding links into your dashboard is a really helpful feature, especially if you're presenting your dashboard to your team or your colleagues. When you add links, you can add them to external resources or to internal resources. In this dashboard, I've added a link from the total revenue to the sales dashboard, as there's a lot more information in the sales dashboard that is related to the total revenue, and it's a lot more detailed. I can then just click back and go back to my original dashboard. If you're looking for a function that's going to make your dashboards a lot more eye-catching, then we would suggest maybe using dynamic text boxes and images. They can show specific trend indicators and images for absolute or relative defined values. In this dashboard, we've used a dynamic image on the profit margin. In this case, we'll see a check mark when the profit margin is over 20% and an exclamation mark when it's under 20%. Very much like in the chart tooltips, dynamic text boxes and images also have customizable tooltips. This can be used to show additional information, like the KPI definitions or what the criteria was. So if we hover over, it shows the criteria of why there's a check mark. And we can see that it says that when the profit margin goal is above 20%, you'll see a check mark, and under 20%, you'll see an exclamation mark. A final feature that we think would be very useful to you is the hierarchical filters. As you can see, we have all these specific metrics listed here, and I can select and deselect the particular metrics that I want the dashboard to be filtered on. What is important though, is that these filters are hierarchical. This means that one filter will influence the selection of other filters. For example, you can combine the product category and the product names with each other. Then, when I select something from the product category, automatically all the product names which are in that category are selected. And I'll show you just using cameras as an example. So I select cameras as my category, and now I have all the camera products automatically selected. Now, after filtering our specific criteria, we decided cameras. You can see that the dynamic image has also changed accordingly. In this instance, the profit margin is at 19% and just below 20%, so the icon has changed to this exclamation mark as we haven't reached the goal of 20%. Well, that's all from me. Thank you for watching and I hope I was able to show you the value of interactive dashboards. If you want to try using a professional dashboard software free of charge, then head to our website, datapine.com, to get started.